Alright, so this is my sun tracking solar power train. Uh, I've actually got three of them here, all side by side. Main thing you need is a track that goes all the way around the equator, so you can just follow the equator way gates on your compass and just make a path with a rover or not, uh, and then put tracks on it. Uh, and the main thing that makes this work here is going to be the sensors. Now you only need four sensors to get this to track the sun 100% of the time, uh, but you have to set them up a little bit special here. So what you have is you have a medium solar panel, uh, you have something that uh, uses power, so in this case I've got a portable oxygenator, but over here is another way to do it with an auto arm that uses power. Uh, and then you have a battery, and the battery is basically just a little buffer so that if you momentarily lose solar power, it doesn't recall the train over and over. You have to lose it for about 30 seconds. Uh, and so the way this works is when you have power, this uh, power sensor is set to power gain. So as soon as the sun comes up in this area on this way gate, uh, it will, there's a little sensor path here, it will call the train over to these posts uh, or all the trains to these posts um, and then as the sun comes up to the next way gate uh, it'll call it to the next way gate and so on now the reason you have to have this buffer here is there's a weird bug where if you have the sun directly overhead there's no power the, the sun is overhead but for some reason there you see it up there there's no power actually being received by any solar panel um, for some reason and that's just a weird bug it's only momentary it's only for about two degrees on either side of uh directly overhead that the power cuts off but if you don't have this set up with the battery it'll call the train back in the middle of the day it gets a little screwy so this just makes it so it only calls it once per day and then the battery will only have enough time to drain when the sun is actually down overnight um so I've got three different trains. They're set up slightly differently here. So I've got medium solar panels on this train on the left. In the middle, I've got the large solar panels. And on the right side, I've got the small solar panels. Small solar panels are way more dense. This small solar train is going to generate 720 power uh, per second. This one in the middle with the large is only generating 45. Uh, and this one over here is about 120, so it splits the difference. Now there is a little bit of lag when these all run all the time, so depending on how much you have, you may not actually want all of these little ones, but it is an option and it is very power dense. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to turn on uh, the time, because I have it paused, and we're just going to watch this train follow the sun. So what's going to happen is, as the sun gets right overhead, this is going to cut off so we can watch this happen. Uh, and then when the sun reaches the next way gate, which should be shortly thereafter, so there it goes, cut off. Uh, when it reaches the next way gate, it's going to call the trains. And they're just going to stay in the sun. There it goes. The whole time. So there they go. Tracking along, and when we get to the next way gate, same exact thing's going to happen. So you only need four of those sensors, one on each way gate around the equator. Uh, and you can set up as many trains as you want, and they're just going to follow the sunlight and collect power 24-7. Let me know what you think.